So in this hopefully quick tutorial we're going to look at making this lip box type transition. Okay so I'm going to start off by bringing a couple of clips in to the timeline to work with. We need to make sure that we've got handles on our clips for the transitions to work. So just pull back the edges of both clips, click in between and ripple delete. And we can also chop off a chunk of this clip because we don't need it. Like so. So the first thing you need to do is bring any transition onto your timeline. So we'll start with this standard cross dissolve, pop it over your join. Next, you're going to right click on this and convert to fusion cross dissolve. And then you're going to right click again and open in fusion. This puts your transition in the fusion screen. You've got media one, media in one and media in two. Media in one is your first clip. So in this case, the band and then media in two is the second clip, the boxer. We don't need this cross dissolve, so we can get rid of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a 3D scene. And we're going to build our 3D scene around a 3D node that isn't actually available in your hotbar. So if you press shift and space and type cube, you'll see cube 3D at the top. Select that and add it. The reason I'm using a cube 3D is that you can actually assign a different image to every face of the cube. And what we're going to do is we're going to put media in one, which is our first clip onto this front face. And we're going to put media in two onto the back face. So if you select your cube 3D and come into the inspector, you've got all your colors for the different faces. So the orange is the front face. You can't see it, but the right face is green, purple, back face is white, and the bottom face is pink. For now, all we're worried about is this orange face, so the front face. What we're going to do is we're going to change the color of that to white. The reason being, if you put an image over the orange, then the two, the image and the orange color mix. Next thing we need to do is change the size of this cube. We want this face and the back face to be 16 by 9 proportion. To do that, select your cube, come to controls and we're going to unlock width, height and depth and what we want is the width to have a proportion of 16 compared to the height of 9 and the easiest way of doing that is if you double click in width and just type 16 divided by 9 and hit enter and you get this value 1.777 blah -de blah So this is now 16 by 9 face. We have to do that because unlike an image plane that automatically adjusts to the size of the clip, your cube or any 3D shape won't. So now if we take the output from media 1, if you right click and drag and just drop it over cube 3D, you get all your options of which input you want it on. And in this case, we want it on the front input. So we've now got our band footage or our first clip on the front face. We're going to do the same with media in two, right click. And this time we're going to pick the back face. So now if we rotate our cube, you see that we've got the boxer on the back and the band on the front. So now we're going to need to get this into some format that we can see on the timeline. And to do that, we're going to build a 3D scene 
that this cube sits in. So select your cube 3D, come to these icons here, which are all your 3D tools. And we're gonna to go to the middle one, which is the merge 3D. We're gonna hit that. Next, we're gonna hit a camera, and then we're gonna hit a light. And then finally, we're gonna hit the render 3D. And now we can move these out to give ourselves a bit more room and see what we're doing. The render 3D will basically change our 3D scene into a 2D scene, which we can then pipe into our output, which at the minute looks like this, which isn't what we want. First thing we need to do, if we go back to two viewers, and we'll put the render in that viewer, First thing we're going to need to do is bring our camera so that it's in a usable position. To do that, you're going to select camera. You're going to go to transform. You're going to check use target. This will keep the camera pointing at the middle of our scene. Next, come up to the Z axis and slowly increase it. And what you want, if you press and hold control and scroll your middle mouse wheel, you can zoom this window out. What you want is to get a value where your image fills the screen. Like so, in this particular example, it's 0 0.344 or 345. So that's your default camera position. And if we look at the 3D scene, you can see where your camera sits here. Next, you're gonna position your light. So select spotlight, again, transform, again, use target, bring the Z axis back. And if you come to the top of your viewer where you've got this circle that says lighting, click it, it turns the lighting on. And if you come to your render 3D and activate lights and shadows, you can see the effect that your light's having. Now we don't want the light to have such a strong effect there. So we're going to have to reposition it. So select your light. And you can play with your various X, Y, and Z settings to try and keep your scene lit, but minimize the sort of effect of this bloom here. And what we're trying to find is a balance where the light isn't having too drastic an effect. Let's pull that back. Somewhere around about there. So now what we need to do is start to animate things. And the first thing I'm going to animate is the camera. I want the camera to pull back and then go back to where it was. And to do that, we're going to use anim curves. So select your camera, come to Z, right click, and modify with anim curves. Now go to your modifiers. Now you want your offset to be at that value that we just had, which was 3.44. And that now sits us with our image framed. Now what we need to do is come to the midpoint, which is 24, so 12 frames. And we need to adjust the scale so that we've got roughly the size that we want and then check mirror and then adjust the scale again. And we can also set the curve to easing and just add sign on both of those. So now as we play through our clip, our camera comes out and then goes back in again.
Okay, so once we've got our camera action going, we now need to spin our cube around. And I'm going to do that by rotating it on the X and the Z axes. Again, we're going to use anim curves. So right click on X, modify with anim curve. If you're going to modifiers, it defaults to 180, which is what we want. And then we can do Z, modify with anim curves. Again, Z is going to default to 180, but what we can do is change it to minus 180, just for a bit of variety. And now as we play through, our cube spins away and comes back with our second clip. So if you come to your edit and just allow that to cache and you've got your spinning cube transition. Now what I added was a reflection and to do that it's fairly straightforward. Again right click, open in Fusion. All I did was I set up a second render pass but using the camera, light and cube. To do that, click on nothing selected, come to the top and bring in a merge and then pipe an output from your cube. Your camera. And your spotlight. With this second merge selected. Add a render. And then what we're going to do is we're going to merge this render back onto our original render. But what we also need to do is change so that the first render is the foreground. So select your merge, control T, and that just swaps the inputs. From this second render, make sure it's selected and hit transform. What we can do with this is going to transform and flip vertically. Now we need to blend this down. To do that, underneath this transform, we're going to bring in a background and a merge node. This transform now pipes into the merge and the background goes in. Again, they're the wrong way around, so control T to switch your inputs so that the transforms into the foreground and your background is into the background. We want the background to be transparent. And with this merge, we're going to just drop the blend to about 0.25-ish, somewhere around there. And if we now use our transform node, we can drop where that appears, like so, so you get a sort of reflection going on behind here. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to come to my halfway point. I'm going to actually pull the camera back a little bit more, I think. So come to your camera, come to your modifiers, and where you've got your anim curve, I'm going to change this scale so that our box goes further away. And that shows your reflection a bit better. Like so. And again, if we come back to the edit tab, you can see the final kind of output. Again, we need to let it cache. And we get this effect going on. Now, at the minute, it's a one second transition, which, which was deliberate. I kept it short, um, but you can drag and make it a couple of seconds long. And again, once it's sort of cached. And there you have your flipping box transition.
Now, if you want, you can right click and create transition preset, which will put it into this user section of your transitions. That normally works. For some reason for me at the minute, it's not working. So the other way to do it and the way that will allow you to then distribute this as a transition is if you right click, go back into Fusion. And what you're going to do is you're going to select all the nodes except your media out and your two media ins. So basically all these nodes, just select them, right click and go to macro, create macro, give it a name. Something like that. Now, I don't want anything to be accessible by the user. I just want them to drag and drop the transition. So I don't need to change any of these settings. If you look, you've got an input on front face of your cube and the back face of your cube. And then you've got an output from this merge node, which is this merge node here. And that's all you need. All you would do then is you would go to file and select save as group. Now you need to save this into your transitions folder where that is for you may well be different to where it is for me. I'm on a Mac. The path on a Mac is your main hard drive, library, application support, uh, black magic design. And then you've got DaVinci resolve. And if you scroll down, you go through the fusion, templates, edit, and then transitions. And you save into this transitions folder. Now on 17.2 upwards, unless you previously saved other transitions or effects or titles or whatever, you may not have this folder structure. You will have templates but you may need to create a folder called edit and inside that folder, you would need to create another folder called transitions. And then once you're in the transitions folder, you just hit save. I'm not going to save because I've already done it. Hit save and your macro will then be saved. You can then come to the edit tab Assume this isn't here. And if you go down to Fusion Transitions, you will find your box flip transition. And you just simply drag it between your clips. It defaults to a second. But I find it works best at about two seconds. Again, you'll need to let it cache, but once it's cached, it will quite happily play what I've just noticed when I originally did this is I took the colors off the edge of the boxes. All you need to do to do that, open Infusion, where you have your Cube 3D. So before you save the macro, where you've got your Cube 3D, if you open it up, go to Materials, and then you can just click through this list one at a time and change all the colors to white or whatever color you want but i chose white and that gives you this sort of white outline rather than the multicolored outline that you had with the original cube anyway that's yeah that's your box flip transition and making it into a macro um hope it made sense hope it was useful Please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.